when your excuses make you feel a little bit better about the fact that you didn't execute on what you needed to execute on, then they can make you feel better. But they're not helping you. They're not helping you at all. This went wrong. This failed. Didn't accomplish this. And it's not the fault of my boss. It's not the fault of my girlfriend. It's not the fault of my parents. It's not the fault of the weather. It's my fault. And I'm going to take ownership of it and I'm going to fix it. That's what extreme ownership is. This ain't about today. This ain't about tomorrow. This is about every day. Why? Because every day matters. And when you learn to perfect every single day, you're going to wake up and see yourself doing things you never thought were possible. Because you're sad, now you're going to make a bunch of bad decisions because you're sad. No, no, it doesn't, doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You're sad. Okay. You get emotional sometimes. Okay. Got it. Now get control of your emotions and carry on with your life. And sometimes you're going to get hit with those waves. And that's okay. Oh, I'm having an emotional moment right now. There's something wrong with me. No, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. The other extreme is, oh, I'm letting my emotions run my life and I'm making a bunch of bad decisions. And my excuse is, well, you know, I lost some friends or I had this traumatic experience happen to me. That's why I'm doing, that's just an excuse. And it's a very easy excuse. Guess what? It's time to carry on. Remember, don't dwell. I'm in control. This is my life. If you are in the problem, you won't see the solution to the problem. Take a step back, detach from the chaos, detach from the mayhem, detach from your emotions, detach from your ego, and be able to assess the best way to execute. That is the job of a leader. If you have self-discipline, if you have the discipline to save your money and work hard and invest your money properly, if you have the discipline to manage your time correctly and not waste a bunch of time, if you have the discipline to exercise and eat healthy, you will end up with freedom. When you wake up in the morning, look at your goals. Your goals gonna tell you what time to get up. Are you hearing me? Your goals gonna tell you who you should be hanging out with. And who, people ask me quite a lot, Eric, should I do this, should I do that? I can't tell you, but your goals gonna tell you how much sleep do you need? You might not need to get up at three o'clock in the morning for your goals, I don't know. But your goals are going to define what time you get up, how you live your life, how you move, when you say yes, when you say no. Like when you write your goals down, you will know, no, nope, can't do it. Yep, that's for me, are you hearing me? So write it down and keep writing it down over and over and over. What do you want? Look, you, you eat however you want to eat. You, you, you do whatever you want to do, right? When you don't know what you want. When you're not clear on what you want, like you, you, you get up whenever you feel like it. You don't have no drive. You don't have no passion. And so when people ask me, eat, where your passion come from? Where your drive come from? I know what I want. Every single day, I wake up, boom, and I go pursue it. Every single day. How far will your will take you this year? Because there's some things in life you're not going to get. They're not coming to you. You got to go take it. There's some stuff that you can't even just earn by doing the good thing, doing the right. Listen to me. There's some stuff if you're going to get it, you got to will to get it. It will happen. It will come to pass. But it's not going to happen at your desk, like at your job. It's not going to happen in the basement at your crib. It's not going to happen with you in the bed dreaming about it. It's not going to happen with you in the shower thinking about it. There's some stuff, and I'm telling you from experience, you know I was homeless in a high school dropout. You know that. Right? You know I was eating out of garbage cans. People say, E, how did you get to where you are? I will it. Because some things only come with heart, with will. Until you work on your will, stop giving up and stop quitting. Stop giving in. Every time stuff get hard, December is going to look just like last December to you. Life will break you if your will ain't strong. Don't feel alone. Join us on visionversity.in, where a supportive community is waiting for you. Take the first step and grow in life, no matter where you are or what you do. When you talk to people that went to SEAL training that didn't make it, most of the time, it's some reason. There's a medical reason, there's a family problem. There's very few people that look at you and say, oh, I quit because it sucked, which is what happens to the vast majority of people. The vast majority of people that don't make it through SEAL training, they didn't make it through because they quit. Your excuses will destroy you and take everything that you ever wanted from you if you let them. Because when you look around at your life and you look around at your job and your financial situation and your relationship and your physical health, when you look at all those things 
and all the problems that you may have with those things and you say the reason I have all those problems is because of me that can hurt that can sting and a lot of times our ego rejects that and makes excuses and lies and then we don't have to change anything and then nothing changes when the excuses all go away and people can actually confront the fact that this is all because of me it hurts but it is also unbelievably empowering because the more discipline you have in your life the more freedom you will end up with so if you lack the discipline to exercise and eat healthy you will end up being a slave to disease if you lack the discipline to work hard save your money you will end up a slave to finances if you lack the discipline to manage your time correctly you will end up with no free time you're going to start to progress in every aspect of your life and you'll see that if you have that kind of discipline right now you're going to end up with freedom if you have discipline you will attain freedom Go try and accomplish something that's hard. You may win, you may lose, you may succeed, you may fail. I'll tell you what, you'll be better. And if you don't have that kind of discipline and you don't work hard and you don't exercise and you don't apply yourself, you're going to end up shackled. So if you're in the woods and you don't know where to go, start walking. You got to start walking because the perspective is not going to change. You have to start moving forward. But standing there lost and not doing anything is just waiting to die, waiting to starve to death. Don't let that happen. I think it's really important because as men we we don't we get conflicting messages about emotion and how to express it and what that looks like and there's a lot of men struggling right now. Every human faces challenges and you don't know what they've been through. But suppressing them isn't going to help. and nor is letting them run your life. If you take any trait of a human being and you take it to an extreme, masculine or feminine or otherwise, you take it to an extreme it's it's going to be a problem. Is it good to have no emotions whatsoever? No, that's called a sociopath. Is it good to let your emotions run your life and make your decisions based on your emotions? No, that's not good either. What do we want to be as a as a human, as a man? We want to be balanced. it's much easier to be extreme it's 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 much easier to say oh no emotions cool and turn them off that's easier or or a total emotion mayhem that's easier it's harder to find balance it's harder to find balance in business it's harder to find balance in life it's hard to find balance but you have to be balanced because what i want is for the team to win so be balanced you're going to be okay I want your dream to be so clear, so vivid. That when you wake up in the morning, all you got to do is step in your dream. Ah. Every day matters. So be phenomenal or be forgotten. Now we got to keep climbing. We got to keep moving. We got to keep going. You're not where you are because you don't have an opportunity. The reason why I've been telling you don't be average, don't be good, try to be great and be phenomenal. The reason why I told you that is because listen to me, you 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 got to understand. You have to understand if you stay average and you stay good, you'll never get to where you're trying to get to. Great is about growth. It's about going from the right brothers to the small little plane to a 757. Are you hear me? That's 757 in you. And you still operating on the right brothers plane. And I'm telling you if you average you're going to be forgotten. If you good, you're going to be forgotten. Nobody's going to remember you. Listen to me. You got to get away. You got to run from average like a plague. And then when you get to good, you got to make up in your mind that good is only to going to be for a few moments. It's just a, it's just a platform. You're going to get out of good and you're going to go to great. And then you're going to be like your boy, man, for real. I'm trying to transition. I'm trying to transition. I'm trying to go from great, man. Look, you see it. It's your dream. It's your goal. And so you got to make an investment in it. 
If you need 10 grand, you make the investment, right? Stop asking people to uh, 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 sponsor your dream, uh, to make your goal become a reality, to babysit your child, to rear up yoke that what was birthing you to take care of it. Take, listen to me, stop begging. Invest in yourself. And I'm gonna tell you something. If you invest in yourself, what you will discover is that other people will invest in you. But I'm telling you, ain't nothing gonna change if you can't see it. So I ask you a question, what do you want? And I ask you, what do you want? Because the days you don't feel like getting up out of bed, the days you feel like quitting, giving up and giving in. Listen to me, the only thing that's gonna get you up out that bed, the only thing that's gonna make you strive past that obstacle, get past that brick wall and stop it. The only thing that's going to make you get up and do what you're supposed to do is what you see. You got something special inside of you. You're not only a special person created at a special time. You have something special in you and this is the year that you do special things. All right, so this is the year to do the impossible. I need you to drive possible. What do I mean when I say drive possible? I mean, okay, let me give you an example, right? You got a tree, right? If you hit a tree, I'm talking about a big oak tree. If you hit an oak tree a thousand times in a thousand different spots, what's gonna happen? Absolutely nothing. But if you hit an oak tree a thousand times in the exact same spot, you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna bring it down. You're going to do the impossible. So what I need you to do for me, Monday, I need you to do the possible. Tuesday, I need you to do the possible. Wednesday, I need you to do the possible. Thursday, I need you to do the Friday, I need you to do the possible. Saturday, Sunday, I need you to do the possible. We are gonna drive it home. What am I talking about? I'm talking about being consistent. I'm talking about regularity. Listen to me, I'm talking about consistency. Once you can get that momentum going, once that momentum gets going, boom, there's no telling where you can go. So the first level was all about you, all about you. Understand there's nothing you can't do, there's nothing you can't have, there's nothing you can't be, but that's over now. Now, we gotta build on that. What are you willing to sacrifice to get what you want? What are you willing to give up? You want to be the best at your company. You want to make more money than you've ever made. You want to travel the world. I don't know. I don't know. You want to build your second home. I'm not sure what you want, but I need you to understand that you got to give up. You can't stay where you are and go where you're trying to go. And that's the problem. Many of you, you love your comfort zone too much. You love it. You love security too much. And I'm telling you, you can stay where you are. You can but you can't stay where you are and try to go where you're going. So what sacrifices this year are you willing to make? What are you willing to let go of? What are you willing to give up? All right? What are you willing to part ways with, right? All right, and so that's why we say you gotta want this thing as bad as you wanna breathe. But before you can want it as bad as you wanna breathe, you gotta know what you want. For real, I've been, I've been out of the country. I did that. I got the passport. I seen the world. I did that. I got the degree. I did it. I've been there, done that. I, I'm married. Yup. Got the house. Yup. Picket fence. Yup. Two kids. Yup. I got it. And now I'm trying to let other people taste it. I'm trying to let other people feel what it feels like to break a cycle. I'm trying to let other people feel what it feels like to make their dreams become a reality. Are you hearing me? Nobody else got to see what you see, but you got to see it and you got to see it clearly. So what is, and when I say see it, hear what I'm saying. I'm not talking about visual. I'm talking about in your mind. I'm talking about using your imagination. Like you ain't got to pay for that. There's no limits. There's no boundaries. Like stop letting people stop you. Stop letting people tell you, well, Eric, if I was you, I wouldn't do it. You ain't me. You're not me. So of course you don't see it. Of course you don't think it can be done. Why? Because you can't do it. But just because you can't do it don't mean I can't do it. And they're not hating. Stop calling them haters. They just don't see what you see. They're not in your mind. And then when I talk about seeing it, I'm not just talking about your imagination. I'm talking about purposing in your heart. Like believing it, having faith. 100% that whatever it is you set out to do that you can do it that you've got everything that's it you've got what it takes to do it you are unique you are special you, you listen to me you were designed in a way that nobody else was designed there, when, they, when that blueprint was made for you listen to me they threw it out there's nobody else like you so you gotta do me a favor you gotta believe it float like a butterfly and stay like a bee I'm the biggest fighter in all history. I'm the greatest fighter in all history. I don't have to convince nobody now that I am great. They all know it. I'll fight any man in the world. I'll beat any man. For most of us, nobody's going to feed us. You got to feed. There are some things in life nobody's going to show up. If you're listening to me right now, in up in the mirror and tell yourself, I got this.
I've got this. If I have to do it alone, I will. Because to fulfill this vision, to fulfill my destiny, ultimately, I am depending on the God that put the dream in my heart and myself. With tears in your eyes, with broken hands and a heavy heart, if nobody is there, then you are in a room by yourself. Start alone. But get started. Help is coming. But everything rises and falls on you. Oftentimes, the people that you wanted in your life will reject you, and that rejection is protection. It is a blessing because it's the same. You to always get it right, but you got to keep going. Don't feel alone. Join us on visionversity.in, where a supportive community is waiting for you. Take the first step and grow in life, no matter where you are or what you do. My vision is to create a supportive and informative platform. When you start alone, you possess a power that few can handle. I want to encourage somebody out there who's thinking about quitting and giving up. Somebody who has been praying for years for things to turn around. You're thinking about quitting. You're thinking about giving up. Don't give up. There are some times in life where you fall down and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. So it's like one step at a time. You just want to to step out of it, to step out of the, 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 the whole race, the whole business. The, the monstrosity of being alive overwhelms you. We cannot deny the forces that once we attain a certain level of pleasure, then we're going to get used to it. But if it gets you know, redirected or it doesn't happen the way we want, well, that's when the suffering comes. You take steps in this direction, you take steps in that direction, and sort of get lost along the way, and sometimes you fall down. But if I fail, I try again and again and again. For as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. And it's not the end until you've given up. And just the fact that you're here should persuade you that you have another chance to get back up. There's still hope. Where is there happiness? Well, happiness is found within, within the heart, or found within the whole world, everything and nothing. It's not in one particular thing, but it's in everything. You know how it feels to have a broken heart? And I know how it feels to be alone. But I just want you to know that it's not the end. You're thinking about quitting. You're thinking about getting up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Stay in it. Stay focused. You've got to reevaluate and attack life again. And it's, it's tough. It's hard. You know, it's like being knocked back almost. Even though you're successful, it's like being pushed back again. Yeah, whether you win or you lose, the depression still sets in, right? Yeah, yeah. The number of uh, teens, Gen Zers, 20-somethings suffering from uh, depression and anxiety and loneliness. Loneliness is through the roof. This is one of the biggest issues that they're dealing with on college campuses. We rise to our maximum potential when we're of service to others. Going back to anxiety, going back to depression, going back to loneliness, I truly believe that's the answer. That's the way out of any kind of mental illness. It's like, I'm going to make myself a better person. I'm going to make the world a better place. And everything that I'm doing, I've got these two chariots, and I'm going down this road, or I'm going down this road, or I'm going down both together. I've been there a lot in my life, uh, especially before my car accident, my teenage years. Uh, then the first woman I ever loved, we had a big breakup. And that breakup sent me down in depression and suicidal planning. It's tough to dispense advice to people other than get help. And I'll share why. Because that time in my life, I had so many people coming up to me. You know, my friends would come into my dorm room. Oh, Brennan, let's go do something. And you just, there's just, the, the hope is lost. And what people, I think, make the mistake of trying to do is hype people up. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to be great. And what people need who are suicidal is serious psychological intervention. They need to seek support and help. And outside of that, when they do get that support, the first thing a great therapist is going to do, outside of the emotional reflection work of why are you here and what has caused this sort of pattern for you, they're going to get you starting 
to get some momentum. The, the most important thing is when you are super down, outside of finding that emotional reasoning for where you are, is to start getting momentum. Because with momentum comes hope, with momentum comes motivation, with momentum comes, uh, uh, you know, that feeling that there's a reason for tomorrow. And so it's as simple as just saying, okay, what are three things I'm gonna do today? And I don't mean that like a lot of personal development guys would say like, what are your three big goals for the day? Arr! I'm like, dude, sometimes that first goal is, sh I'm gonna shower today. I'm really gonna shower today. I'm gonna walk to the library. I'm gonna come home. And that's all they got. Like literally, that's all they got. And you gotta honor that struggle when you're in that place, like know that where you're at, it is okay that you're there. And now you're gonna need help. And now you're gonna to have to set up some daily practices just every day, win a little bit. Not like win your dreams, not like crush through goals, not like be a badass, not like, no. Just momentum, man. You know, I, most of the guys I've dealt with in that position who were suicidal, um, outside of their therapeutic work, I said, the most important thing you can do is win the morning. I don't want to ever be flippant with the advice to people who are dealing with that situation outside of get some help, get some momentum, and be okay if that momentum is really small because it will build. Trust that that momentum builds and trust that those gloomy and bad, dark days, trust that those are going to be there. They'll get less and less and less as you learn how to cope but they're gonna be there. And so when they're there, it's when the, my, I mean, outside of teaching people to bring the joy in my life, I teach people to honor the struggle. Honor the difficulty. When we honor the struggle instead of hate the struggle, we can really achieve extraordinary things because our mindset's in the right place. It accepts, like, as soon as you honor the struggle, you accept that, oh, of course, there should be struggle here. I should, I should honor this process. When you go to the gym to work out, you like honor that this is gonna be hard and honor that process of getting better. And the more that you bring honor to it, the more your psyche builds with strength and you get a little bit of that esteem back because you see yourself engaging something versus avoiding it and running away. You see yourself connecting with something and giving it reverence. Like, like I have reverence for the difficulties of life. They may be better. So I don't want a friction-free life. I'm not interested in it. I, I like to say sometimes that you know, the journey to greatness begins the moment that our you know deep desires for comfort and ease are overpowered by our desires to connect and contribute. I look at veterans in the past. It was you know I think in World War II it was called shell shock. It was all these different things, but it was not acknowledged in the way that it is now. But I think it needs to be talked about more. I think the more things are talked about, the more comfortable we are, and the more we can understand them. Uh, when I woke up one morning and saw that in a tweet that Prince Harry came out talking about his depression, it made me really happy. Because I've been places and someone has said, well, you lost an arm and a leg, so you had a right to be depressed, and I stopped him. I was like, depression is real. You don't, you don't even have to go through something traumatic. Some are caused by you know something traumatic. Some can be a, a chemical imbalance in the brain. And I feel like if you had heart problems and saw a cardiologist, well, everyone would be concerned about you. Would know you're doing better, and it would be open and honest with the crew, anybody you no work stigma, with. Not yeah, weird. but the most complicated organ in your body. If you have a problem with this, suddenly there's a. We don't want to talk about that. No, and you can get over it. And that's what people need to realize. You can be cured. You can get past it. That's what we need to, need to realize. You know, the reason I did it is because when I was in my depression, I thought I was alone. I didn't open up to anybody. So I thought someone's going to read this and it's going to help them. So I just, as nervous as I was about the book, I kept thinking that one person is going to read it. Well, now it's open up this dialogue and I'll go and I'll speak and we'll do Q and A and people want to talk about it. I gave a speech in Florida and it was, it was an older crowd. This is like I was gonna say, it was, they were old. And I speak what's on my heart. Mm -hmm. And I gave my speech and as I was closing, I kind of mentioned some depression. Because I was, I was coming out of the winter months and I, it hit me again this past winter and I went and saw the doctor. And so it was on my mind and it came up. And as I was saying, I thought, this generation of people probably aren't connecting to what I'm saying. When I walked off the stage and they lined up, the amount of people that thanked me 
were talking about mental health. And here I was, I thought they didn't want to hear. I thought I was stepping out of line. No, it needs to be talked about because it's, it's not just this generation. It's people are realizing more and more that it's an issue. Right. And the more we talk about it, the easier it is for people to be honest with themselves and get the help they need. Someone did not wake up this morning, but you did. And if you can hear this message and you can see my face, mm -hmm. then guess what? We are both in the right place. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand something. Reason and purpose. There is a reason for you as well. There. It's a new day. It's a better day. It's a bright day. And it's all about you. And as most importantly, all about conducting that business. I want to remind you about something. Stop chasing people. Stop trying to get people to like you. Stop trying to get people to approve of your well-being. You are who you are and what you are. Just see yourself who you are. Know who you are. Know where you come from. If you came from hardships and you're still here, you have power. You have strength. You have courage. All you got to do is use it. Put it out there. Ignite that fire and keep going. Don't you give up now. Don't you say that you don't have it anymore. I know we've been there. I know I've been there. Many people have been there. They didn't think that they could carry on, but they kept going anyway. Between reason and purpose as you can to get through it and to be strong and to be productive and be as successful as you can possibly be. I want you to continue to live your life the best way you can. When you go through the darkness, search for the light. Because dark days will come. But I'm here to let you know that you are powerful. You got to lift your head up and stop looking down. It's difficult out here for a lot of people, including myself. A lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are going through a lot of different things. They're experiencing so many different dramatic changes in their lives. But the thing about it is, is that you can't be surprised about these things, but you need to be prepared. You should never walk through life assuming that every day is just gonna be a great day for you. Believe me, I know. And I know there are many people out there that can say the same thing. But it's all about how we deal with it and how we overcome it. It's all about rising up, people. Being able to get up, get out, show up, and do your business. That's what it's all about, people. You got to have the ability to know what it means to rise up. Being able to rise up from the ashes of negativity, doubt, and fear. These things are definitely designed to pull you down, to break you down, and take everything from you. But not on this day, not on this watch.